Lovers of cinema will never forget that day when Michael Douglas walked away from his car during a traffic jam only to go on a journey on the streets of LA where his character would have a breakdown and go on a rampage which leads him to commit violent acts. And you really don't want to get in this guy's way or it ain't going to end well for you. Nothing will stop him and his annoyance fueled rampage. Released in 1993, Douglas plays William Foster, aka Defense, a man who has been downtrodden by society, where he starts his own journey of revenge and retribution. Now, I already made a video about falling down a few years ago, and I went into great detail about Douglas's crew cut. But is there anything else that we could learn about this amazing and thought-provoking movie? Well, yes, or otherwise this video wouldn't exist. So prepare yourself as we return to that hot and sweaty LA morning of 1993, while we explore 10 more things that you didn't know about falling down. Let's check it out, sport. I'm the bad guy? Yeah. How'd that happen? I did everything they told me to. Number 10, written by a part-time actor. Falling Down was the brainchild of its writer, E.B. Rose Smith, and despite the fact that Falling Down is truly a powerful and thought-provoking script, written by someone who is no doubt an accomplished Hollywood writer, it was in fact the only script that E.B. Rose Smith wrote. In fact, he is mainly known for starring in small roles in movies, such as Outrageous Fortune, The Big Easy, and Turner and Hooch, as well as TV shows like Cheers and Murphy Brown. So all this leads to the big question. What does it all mean? What is the true meaning behind falling down? Well, simply put, it's about a man of the past trying to get by in this new world that rejects him. As Smith himself puts it, quote, to me, even though the movie deals with complicated urban issues, it really is just about one basic thing. The main character represents the old power structure of the US that has now become archaic and hopelessly lost. For both of them, it's a just or die time. End quote. Number 9, Falling Down is the second collaboration between Michael Douglas and Joel Schumacher. So as I mentioned in the previous Falling Down episode, no studio wanted to go anywhere near Falling Down, to the point where it was even considered to make the movie a made-for-cable TV production. The script would eventually find its way to director and bat nipple enthusiast Joel Schumacher, who was a big Hollywood director at the time, having previously had success with St. Elmo's Fire, The Lost Boys and Flatliners. In fact, Falling Down was something of a departure for Schumacher, as his previous movies were young adult movies with young Brat Pack cast members, whereas Falling Down focused on a middle-aged character. The interesting thing is, Michael Douglas, who would go on to be the main star of Falling Down, had already worked with Schumacher, as he was the producer on the Schumacher-directed, Life After Death-themed horror movie, Flatliners. The two Hollywood players would develop a good rapport while making Flatliners, and would continue to be friends and keep in contact. Which is no doubt how Michael Douglas was even made aware of Falling Down. Which leads me to my next point. Number eight, Michael Douglas took a pay cut. Now Falling Down's production really finally started to take leaps and bounds when Michael Douglas got involved. Douglas read the script and loved it and put up a fight for the movie to get made till finally Warner Brothers got involved along with Joel Schumacher directing. Now, there were considerations being made as to who could play Foster, like Robert De Niro, Harrison Ford, and Robin Williams. But Schumacher really wanted Douglas to star in Falling Down, as the movie's complex lead of William Foster, aka Defense. 
However, Douglas at that time initially wanted to take a break off from acting after starring in two movies back to back, one of them being the erotic thriller Basic Instinct. Douglas was thankfully persuaded to star in the movie, once again because he loved the script and really wanted the movie to be made, and also maybe because he wanted to work with Joel Schumacher again. However, in order to star in the movie, Douglas had to take a pay cut away from his usual higher standard fee of that time. Once again, in order to keep the movie within a certain budget so it could actually be made. So, yeah, Douglas must have been really, really, really passionate about falling down. Dude took a pay cut. Number 7. The Foster defense character has a symbolic twin. So in Falling Down, there's a scene where Foster observes a man holding a sign which reads out, Not Economically Viable, played by actor Von D. Curtis Hall. Foster can relate to this man and his plight, as just like Foster, the not economically viable man has also been struck down by a society that has moved on without him, and now looks down upon him, and sees him as irrelevant, as both these characters have lost their jobs and thus prospects in life, as they are both symbolic of an older era and order. In fact, the not economically viable man is wearing the exact same clothes as Foster. No, seriously, go back, watch the movie and pause. Even down to the characters wearing the exact same tie, suggesting that both Foster and not economically viable man are both of the same mold, with both characters losing their jobs after seven years. No one in the public space acknowledges the not economically viable man, and probably see him as a nuisance, as he's eventually taken away by the police, hitting home even more that Foster and this character are living in a society that no longer cares for them, or even has time for them for that matter. In fact, Foster is the only person who acknowledges the not economically viable man, or even shows him any empathy for that matter, when he directly tells him to never forget him, to which Foster nods. I always felt that maybe, just maybe, the not economically viable guy might just actually be in Foster's head, as it's strange that they wear the same clothes. After all, the scene does kind of feel surreal and dreamlike, as if Foster is having visions of how the world now truly sees him. Literally self-projecting. So could this all be in his head? Either way, the not economically viable man is definitely meant to be symbolic of defense. So what do you guys think? Could the not economically viable guy just be a part of the Foster character's mind? Don't forget me. Number 6. Falling Down's intro was inspired by a 1963 movie. So the intro shot of Falling Down starts with a hellish looking traffic jam. It looks hot sweaty, and like a general nightmare. Like this is the kind of place where you would literally rather be anywhere else. If anything, it demonstrates a broken society and the catalyst that will cause Foster to snap or to start falling down. The intro is brilliantly shot and edited together and builds a lot of tension out of simple imagery. I mean, never before has Garfield made me feel so uncomfortable and freaked out. <laughs> Get away from me, Garfield. It's almost like you can feel the Foster character is on the verge of completely losing his shit. This one traffic jam intro shot actually took an entire day to film. And funny enough, it was inspired by a 1963 Italian movie called Eight Half, which itself is about a film director who's going through anxieties and struggles thanks to a creative block. And yes, yeah, just like Falling Down, Eight Half starts off with a gridlock style traffic jam, which looks just as uncomfortable and as panic inducing as Falling Down. Eight Half starts off with the scene almost making the people stuck in their cars look like helpless prisoners. Which, I guess in a way they are. And just like Falling Down, it sees a character escape from his car, where he then, uh, well, flies into the sky, of course. <laughs> yeah, yeah, imagine if we saw Michael Douglas go all Superman in Falling Down. Regardless, when watching the two scenes back to back, you can really see the inspiration that Falling Down took from Eight Half. Number 5. Falling Down features a giant butt. <laughs> yeah, not kidding. 
Okay, this entry might seem silly, but it's just so brilliant, I couldn't leave it out. Now, it's no secret that the filming of Falling Down was really difficult, as during the movie's LA shoot, the LA riots had started, which caused the production of Falling Down to abandon the location shoot and to film on sets at Warner Brothers Studios in Burbank. At one stage, the production of Falling Down tried to resume on the location filming, but was denied due to the riots and, well, safety issues. However, despite the real-life turmoil of the location at the time, there was also something just so wonderful that took place there, it just melts my heart. And that's this weird object in the background here. I can remember watching Falling Down for the first time and thinking, hmm, that kind of looks like a bottom. Well, that's because it was. This was a giant inflatable bum, which was part of an advertisement for the song Baby Got Back. This advertisement balloon, known as Butt Balloon, <laughs> appropriately named, was touring around America to promote Baby Got Back. And it just so happened that when filming for Falling Down took place in Los Angeles, the inflatable bum was on full display. So rather than wait for the inflatable to move along or shoot from another angle, it was simply decided to just film the scene business as usual. <laughs> With a giant inflatable behind in the background. <laughs> It's out of order. Probably without a doubt creating one of the funniest background movie props of all time. <laughs> Speaking of locations, it's said that the place where Foster buys the snow globe is located next door to where the Cobra Kai dojo was in the Karate Kid. Number 4. Case of the Giggling Extra <laughs> So there's a classic scene where Foster visits a fast food restaurant to get breakfast, only to discover that they stop serving breakfast, which leads him to have another classic meltdown, and thus terrorise the entire store and customers. Hey, I guess this guy just really likes breakfast. The scene was actually filmed at a real restaurant called Angelo's Burgers in Linwood, California, only it was redressed to look like a fictional food chain called Whammy Burger. Now, I mentioned in my previous Falling Down episode that the actress playing the female staff member, Sheila, is Michelle Pfeiffer's sister, Dee Dee Pfeiffer. However, if you watch that scene closely, you'll see she spends most of the time with this big grin on her face. It's like, uh, yeah, there's a crazy guy with a gun there. Try to look at least a bit scared. Okay, maybe we're meant to think that Sheila is one of those people who panic laughs and smiles when in stressful situations. Heck, I do that myself. But good old IMDB offers a different account of events. Apparently, while filming that scene, D.D. Pfeiffer just found the whole scene to be really funny, particularly Michael Douglas's dialogue. How's the food? I think we have a critic. I don't think she likes the special sauce, Rick. So much so that she just couldn't stop grinning and giggling. And who knows, maybe they had limited time for filming at the establishment, so they couldn't reshoot her scenes. But to be fair though, maybe the scene is generally funny. Maybe there's a lot of comedy potential in a man with weaponry going crazy at a restaurant just because he missed breakfast. So much so, it's said that the scene in Big Daddy, when Adam Sandler's character arrives at a McDonald's and completely loses it because he also missed out on breakfast, was inspired by the Whammy Burger scene in Falling Down. Have you ever heard the expression, the customer is always right? In fact, Falling Down would have quite the cultural impact, as other assets of media would be inspired by this movie. Which once again leads me to my next point. Number three. Defense inspired the creation of a Simpsons character. So as mentioned, Falling Down would inspire many works in media. The most glaringly obvious is without a doubt the Foo Fighters music video for their 2011 song Walk, which pretty much recreates scenes from the movie. However, Falling Down led to the creation of a very classic Simpsons character, that being Grimes from the 1997 episode Homer's Enemy, where the character has the same hairstyle, glasses, and general attire as the Foster character. And just as with the Foster character, he embarked on a descent into insanity, namely from having to deal with Homer Simpson after getting a job at the nuclear power plant. Despite the episode having quite a dark ending where the Grimes character is killed off, yeah, the show goes there, he has gone on to be considered as a memorable character. 
something that 80skids.com explains that the makers of the show would go on to regret, as they couldn't use him anymore. So if you've ever watched Falling Down and wondered what would it be like if Foster met Homer, firstly, what a really random thing for you to wonder, and secondly, this premise somewhat exists in the Simpsons episode, Homer's Enemy. Number 2. Falling Down Upset Ex-Military Workers I had previously mentioned that Falling Down managed to get banned in South Korea for the depiction of a South Korean character which I already addressed in my previous episode. But it also pissed off some other people who felt that the movie was overall anti-immigration, as well as other groups who on the other side of that coin thought that the movie was anti-white people. Yeah, back on that day in 1993, everyone was getting offended. However, I haven't heard anything about anyone getting offended from the golfing community, but okay. Yeah, and now you're gonna die wearing that stupid little hat. However, one group that Falling Down seemed to really piss off was unemployed workers formerly of the defense industry, which is who the Foster character was. They were worried that falling down would give off the social perception that ex-employees of the defense industry would be seen as crazy and possibly even dangerous. But look, at the end of the day, it's just a movie. And within the movie, it's the William Foster character himself who goes crazy, not a group of people or stereotypes, just simply that character. And I think the story is about the hardship that anyone who has been abandoned or feel abandoned by a world around them could face, no matter what their job or their ethnicity or background. As Roger Ebert put it, falling down is anyone who, quote, is told after many years of hard work that he is unnecessary or irrelevant. Number one, box office falling up. Falling Down was released in February 1993, and it opened up at the number one spot in the box office, completely knocking Groundhog Day off the number one spot mantle, with it making an impressive $96 million on a $25 million budget. The film got pretty positive reviews from critics, while also carrying several controversies along with it though. And so the movie came out, did its thing, got people talking briefly, and just like that, the movie disappeared. However, in later years, the movie would really make its way through the public consciousness, where it's now found its true fame and is considered a classic and a very powerful and important movie, with Falling Down becoming more relevant with the passing of time. Interestingly, a review in 1993 actually kind of predicted this in a review by the San Francisco Chronicle by Mick LaSalle, where he would go on to say, quote, Falling Down is one of the great mistakes of 1993, a film too good and too original to win any Oscars, but one that's bound to be remembered in years to come as a true ironic statement about life in our time. One thing that I keep seeing written on memes in regards to falling down, as well as statements I keep hearing people say in general, is that the older they get, the more they actually relate to the Foster, aka Defense character. So could it be that as the world has become more cynical and people have become more tired and fed up, that they can now finally relate to the Foster character, with audiences vicariously living out revenge on society through the Foster character and his chaotic deeds that we see him commit on screen? Well, I don't know. Despite the fact that defense may be relatable, and at times even sympathetic, he still does terrible things. Now, some aren't necessarily his fault, but others are, and are pretty horrendous. Some of the chaos we see Foster inflict on others may even seem justified, as some of the people he comes across are truly terrible people, creating a sense of, well, yeah, what Foster did was wrong here, but that person had it coming. All they had to do was to not be mean to him, or just serve him breakfast. You know, not talk to him like crap, or even try and kill him, etc. But in real life, we did all act out like the Foster character did, then we would crumble into chaos and destruction in an odyssey of disillusionment and self-pity and self-fulfilled retribution. Yes, the character is pretty badass and funny and sometimes even justified, but I think most of us have a moral fiber built into us, which says no, no matter how annoying or terrible other people are or how unfair the world can be, we have the common sense to not blow stuff up or kill people and violently strike out. 
Whereas the Foster character loses that filter and goes on this descent into chaos and anarchy. And maybe the fact that the common person wouldn't do this is what makes falling down so intriguing and appealing. Kind of similar to the movie Joker. It shows acts being committed that we would never do and yet somehow understand the downfall. The falling down so to speak, where Foster isn't so much a straight up villain, but more of a fantastical tragic character study of the failings of our own personal lives and society in general. Wow, things sure did get pretty deep here, didn't they? Well, that was my look into Falling Down, which is absolutely a classic film, which does get better and more relevant with the passing of time. Anyway, I'm Minty, and don't ever wear this hat. You don't want to die with that hat stuck on your head. See ya! See ya!